Look at this hive, isn't it amazing? How many bees can fit in a hive? In a hive like this, you could have 50,000 bees inside. And when they're cramped like this, then it's a good time to split your hive. So what we're going to do today is walk you through the whole process of taking a hive split. If you've got questions, you can put them in the comments below and we'll answer them at the end. So if you have a look at the back of this hive, you'll also see there's a bit of honey in there. So we'll expect there to be a bit of weight when we lift the box off. Here's a uh, frame we harvested last week. You can see them filling it up again. Here's one that's full and capped. And you can see down in between the frames, there's a lot of bees in there also. So the observations from outside the hive is it's really strong. There's a lot of bees in there. It's springtime here. It's a good time to take a split. So the first thing we're going to do is just take you through what equipment you'll need to take a hive split. So we need another baseboard like this. You'll need your brood box with, in this case, eight brood frames because this is the eight frame Langstroth size. Then you'll need your inner cover that goes on top of that. And then your roof. So what we're going to do is take some of the frames out of the brood box of this hive and put them in here. What I'm going to show you is how to easily split your hive, something that it's a good thing to do in the springtime. There's multiple ways to, to split hives, but I'll show you a really simple, easy way. The other thing you'll need is a smoker. So I've already got this going. A couple of puffs in the entrance. And it's a good idea to wait a minute before you start taking the hive apart. Also smoking your hands can be a good idea to mask your own smell. Next, you'll need a hive tool like this and also your bee suit. So do make sure you protect yourself. I'm just going to put this, uh, this hood on. You want to minimize bee stings and having a good jacket or bee suit is a very good idea and also your gloves handy, which I've got in my pocket here. When you're new to beekeeping, also wear your gloves. We've got safety information on each page of our website also. So the next thing we're going to do is take this box right off this hive so we have access to the brood nest. So to do that, we're gonna get our hive tool and literally lift and chisel and lift in this position here. You can either go above or below the excluder. So I'm choosing to go above this time. And I'm going to take this door off because that gives you a nice handle to lift your flow hive super. Okay, you can choose to leave the roof on or not. That's up to you. So I'm just pushing it in there, and giving it a good lift like this. We can go around and do that to each corner. And I can see that the excluder probably is going to come with the super in this case. So we might just choose to go underneath it. I could just tell by the way it was sticking to the top box. Okay. Now, if your back's not so good, get some help with this lift. Basically, I'm just going to put a handle on each side and lift the box off. Now, <laughs> the bottom box came with it. And I want to rest it on something so you don't squash any bees when you put the box down. Now notice how the box for the base just separated a little bit. So we're going to uh, just put that back in position. Next, we're going to add a little bit of smoke just to help calm those bees down. So for those that are just tuning in, we're showing you how to take a hive split, which basically means 
moving some frames from this box to another box and making sure the new hive has enough resources to make their own queen or you may choose to add your own queen to the new hive if you're buying one in. So the next thing we're doing is taking off the excluder. Now I'm just peeling slowly. Everything in beekeeping should be nice and gentle, unless you're shaking bees off something, in which case you're not gentle at all. So now what I'm doing is just looking for a queen. If the queen, the queen could be on the underside of the excluder here, and I don't want to orphan her from the hive. Can't see her there. Just to make sure, I'm going to rest it against the entrance so if I missed her, she could crawl back in. Okay. Now let's have a look what's going on in this hive. So what I'm doing now is choosing a frame that will be easy to pull up for the first frame to lift out of the hive. Now the, um, the next thing I'm going to do is just put these little shelf brackets on so I've got a nice frame rest and I'm just going to hook them on the side of the hive here like this and like this so I've got somewhere to rest my first frame. So gentle bit of smoke just where you plan to work so there's less bees when you pull that frame out. Next I'm using the chisel end of the hive tool just to pry the frames apart. Just in these positions here and here where they tend to build a lot of wax and propolis. Next I'm going to use the J end of the tool right between the end bar of the frame and the box wall. Then this section here of the tool rests on the next frame along and makes it really easy to lift your frame up. So once you've lifted it you can use your hand to grab the end and then gently come up. So I'm just resting the frame on a corner while I transfer to using both of my hands. So I'm just looking at this frame here. I can see there's a nice patch of brood here. And that's capped brood. So those bees will be all hatching out in the next 11 days. And on the other side of the frame, you can see more brood. So this hive's got lots of bees and there'll be even more bees soon, so it's a great time to take a split. So in order to take a split, what we need is eggs or really young larvae down the cells that the, the new hive can make a queen from. What happens is the bees will feed royal jelly to a, a, uh, a larvae that they want to turn into a queen. All the worker bees get royal jelly for the first three days, but they'll continue to feed royal jelly to a baby larvae that they want to turn into a queen. And that's why we need to have young eggs on a frame. Eggs or, or, or really young larvae under three days old, so that the bees can then make their own queen in the new hive. Because the end game is we want a queen and some bees in this hive and a queen and a bee and some bees in the hive we're taking the split into. So if I look down these cells I'm seeing some very young larvae. Just a little crescent moon in the bottom. Still I prefer to have some eggs to make sure that they, those little larvae aren't too old. On this side of the frame, 
I am seeing a similar thing. But what I'm looking for is a tiny grain of rice in the bottom of the cells. That's what eggs look like. A tiny little grain of rice in the bottom of the cells. So I'm not seeing any eggs. I'm just seeing very young larvae on this frame. I'm going to put this frame aside and then have a look at the next one. Because what I'm trying to do is make sure that both hives have some eggs in them. So whichever hive doesn't have the queen can then raise a new one. If you're introducing a queen, you don't need to do that step of looking for eggs, but you then need to look for a queen so you know which box has the queen and which one doesn't. I'll go into more about that later. What we're doing is an easy split where all you have to do is find some eggs in each box and away you go. It's called a walk away split. So let's have a look at this next frame. Lots of brood on this side. You can see drones. I'm also looking out for queen cells and swarm cells. Can't see any yet, but I'll talk more about them if we find some. Seeing pollen, lots of brood, and a few waggle dancers on the comb surface as they communicate their amazing language to all the rest of the bees. Seeing larvae down the cells and I can also see a bee just starting to hatch or emerge from its cell. Okay, I'll put that one aside as well. Take a look at the next one. For those that are just tuning in, today we're looking at doing a hive split and we're walking you through the whole process of splitting your hive. So what I'm seeing on this frame is drones and we've got drone brood and worker brood. And I'll show you what they look like just now. If you have a look on the edge of this frame here, you see the drones, the drone cells poke out a bit like a bit of a bullet shape compared to the worker brood which sits flat with the comb surface. So that's normal to see lots of drones, especially in the springtime, as each hive is is making drones to make sure they're sharing their genetics around. Okay. I'm going to have to hold it up to the light and get just the right angle if I'm looking down the cells for eggs. Now if you've got so many bees on the frame, it can be hard to tell. So right now, I've just noticed a queen cell. So that's typical in springtime. The bees will be making queens and preparing to split naturally. So we want to get ahead of the curve and split before the bees do it themselves. That way we're guaranteed to get the hive, or almost guaranteed. So there it is there. So they look kind of like a peanut shape. They're so much bigger than a normal cell, so the bees put it, put it um, hanging vertically downwards. The next thing I'm gonna do is look inside, and yes, there is a queen being raised in that cell. So this is even better than finding eggs in the frame. I've found a queen there, and a second queen just here underneath it and the third one over this side so when the and that one's also got a queen being raised inside you can see the grub down inside the cell so when you see that 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 when you see the cells are on the bottom of the of the comb that's typical for swarm cells they like to put them down low not always but but that's a good sign that this hive is preparing to swarm. So what we're gonna do is put this frame into the split, into another box, and that way we will get uh, queens quite soon, which is fantastic. 
the bees will work it out which queen lives and which doesn't. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get to answering them at the end. So this frame we're going to put into the new hive. Now, because we've got queen cells on here, I don't particularly want the queen to come into the new hive because otherwise you've got a situation where those queens will get killed by the queen that's, um, that's already existing. So ideally, we now leave the queen behind in this box and put new uh, and put this frame with the queen cells on it into the new one. So I'm just going to rest this here for the moment. And set up my new box. Okay. So here you have the baseboard. Just going to put that in position here. Now, because um, we're drawing natural comb in these frames, we'll make sure we get this level. So if you have a look here, at this level bubble that we've put in the Flow Hive 2 base, we can just adjust the legs a little bit till we find level. And it's level in the sideways direction that we need. Okay, that's it, just, just about there. Okay, good. The next thing is the box goes on top. It's your brood box. And we're going to take most of the frames out. Allowing space for us to put the new ones in. So if I hadn't found queen cells, I'd simply put some frames with eggs on them in this box and make sure there was frames with eggs on them in that box and that way both hives have the ability to raise a new queen. But because we've found queen cells with pretty late stage uh, larvae in them, I'm going to have a good look for the queen and hopefully leave her behind in this box. So it's important not to shake a frame with queen cells on it. Now the reason being is that the larva in the cell can get dislodged and actually drown in the royal jelly. So um, it's tempting to shake all the bees off to make sure the queen's not on this frame, but I'm going to refrain from doing that and just use my eyes to make sure the queen isn't on here. If you want some tips on queen spotting, we have a video titled Queen Spotting where Hilary Kearney was here in the Apri showing us how to spot queens with all her tips that are in her new book called Queen Spotting. So generally you're looking for a strutting, striding motion that's different to the other bees and that's how I often pick her up. You're also looking for the shiny back plate as she's been around long enough to wear the hairs off that uh, back plate on her thorax. Okay, so I'm not seeing a queen on that. So that frame with the queen cells is going into the new hive. I'm gonna put that right in the middle and choose a couple of frames to accompany that to make sure we get enough bees to start this new colony. For those that are just tuning in today, I'm showing you how to take a hive split. An easy way to do it, allowing the bees to raise the queen themselves. The smoke has just gone out, so I'm adding a little, a little more fuel to it just by scraping up a little bit of garden mulch here. Let's get that going again. Okay. And I'm just adding a bit of smoke because there's so many bees in this hive. 
that it gets hard to work and you increase the chances of squashing them if they're all over where you're using your hive tool. So up we come. Again, just checking for a queen. There she is. Okay, she's just walking around this side here. You can see her any second. There she is. She's a bit camera shy. There she is there. So you can see her long abdomen and the way she walks a bit differently. She's just jumped around the other side. Again. So that's great news. We know we want to leave this frame in the box here. So with an easy split, you don't necessarily have to find the queen. But in this case, since we've found queen cells, it's perfect that we've found her. We know we're going to leave a queen in this hive and queen cells in this hive, which will give them a jump start to getting going as a new colony. So now I know the queen's in that box. I can grab these frames that are on the outside and put them in to the new colony. So three or four frames is good and the rest I'll leave in this hive. Now it's tempting to put a whole lot of honey in this hive as well but because I know there's a lot of honey around I'm going to leave the honey out. The reason being is when there's not enough bees in your new hive but there's a lot of honey then that increases the chances of hive beetles taking over. You generally want enough bees so that they can police all of the frames that have honey or pollen or brood in them. They can keep the beetles under check. So I'm just going to take three today and leave the rest empty. And I'm going to push them close together so that the space is on either side. It's tempting to checkerboard them so when you're drawing naturally drawn comb you're using the walls of the adjacent frames to keep them nice and straight but if you do that what you're doing is really breaking up this brood nest and I prefer to leave it together. We still have some cold nights. You don't want to isolate the frames from each other by putting a bit, uh, an empty frame in between them. So now I'm just going to push the frames together. If you need a bit of smoke to get bees out of the way as the end bars close, you can. And the reason why I'm pushing them together is because if there's space in the box that shouldn't be there, the bees will build random comb in it. So we want eight frames and any spare space to be left on either side. So we need one more frame in the box. And then we're going to move them all across so the space is evenly distributed. You'll appreciate that space later as the bees really build out their frames. So that's the new hive split. The next thing to do is put frames back into this one so that, that there's not empty space left in this hive or again you get a whole lot of random comb. It's a common mistake new beekeepers make is leaving out frames and you'll get a whole lot of, a lot of uh, random comb that you'll have to dig out because in the end you need every frame serviceable so you can check for disease in your hive. Okay, so I'm going to push the brood nest back together here because what we have now is this big hole in the middle and I'd rather have the, the natural order which is brood in the middle followed by pollen and honey stores and drones and then honey on the outside. So I have at least a couple of frames in the center and uh, that'll mean that the bees have a nice brood nest as they like to have. As soon as we come out to where there's honey 
I'm going to start putting frames in between so they can expand their brood nest onto brand new frames and that will limit their swarming tendency. Okay, just pushing the frames together, nice and gentle, and inserting a couple more frames in here. And moving this one across because I can see this brood on it also. And then I can see the outside one's honey. If you look down here, I'm not seeing any brood. I'm seeing that as honey, so I'm going to leave that right on the edge. Okay. I might checkerboard these honey frames on the outside. Like going one naturally drawn one, then one honey one, and then an empty naturally drawn one again. That way you increase the chances of nice straight naturally drawn frames. Just sliding that down. Again we're going to have to come across so any extra space in the box is on the edges. Pushing all the frames together, like that. So what we've done is add three new frames to this box, which will really limit the tendency to swarm, which is what we want to do. And we've taken a split, which is the perfect thing. If you don't want another hive, then somebody else definitely will. People are always looking for hives. So taking a split is the best thing to do as your hive gets busy. Alternatively, you could add more boxes, another brood box or another super in order to give them more space. But if you leave them all cramped up, they're going to swarm in the springtime, most likely. In which case, if you're around and you can grab that swarm, that's okay. But if you can't hang around all day, you might lose half your bees and that'll weaken your colony and you get less of a honey crop. So taking a split is a great thing to do. What I'm going to do now is put these uh, hives back together, honey super back on this one and the inner cover on this one. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get to answering them. Okay. Just adding a little smoke to these all the bees on the edge to get them to run back in. This hive that is the smaller colony, there's one more thing to do and that's make sure the returning foragers are evenly distributed between the two hives. And if in doubt, put the weaker hive, and this is the weaker one with, with only three frames, more in the pathway of the bees flying home. So that means moving this hive over, which I already, already have done in the beginning, and putting this hive where the original hive was. So the original hive was right here. So this will get more foragers coming home, but this one being the hive that the bees know will also get foragers coming home. So what I tend to do is move the original hive or the stronger hive over and put the new one pretty well where the old one was. Inner cover goes on. And it'll be great to watch these bees as they, they build out these new combs in the coming weeks. Then on with the roof. I'll take off these shelf brackets that we've used as a frame rest. Next we want to put the excluder back on which we've left at the front of the hive here and we're just going to, to nestle it down sweeping any bees in as we go and then the super can go right back on top of this hive. It's 
quite heavy. I'm just going to come around the back here. Okay. So we've now got our super back on the original hive. And this hive will be less cramped now because we've taken some of the bees into the new box. So that's it, the aim of the game is to make sure both hives have a queen or the resources to make one. In this case we had, we had queen cells that had queens being raised in them, so that's a perfect time to take a split. If we didn't find queen cells, we could have found eggs and made sure this hive had some eggs which they could raise a queen from. Cedar Sam's asking, do the bees swarm because there are too many in number or because they want to change the genetics themselves? And can bees self-regulate the number? Okay, there's a few factors when it comes to, to a hive swarming. But the main one is overcrowding. So if you've got lots of bees in your box and no space to store honey or to raise brood, then that'll be a strong trigger for swarming. So there's a few things to do. Make sure you're harvesting honey, give them something to do, and also take a split or add some new frames in the brood box. Alternatively, you can add another brood box or another super. My preference is to take splits and keep hives smaller. They're a bit easier to manage. And you also get the great thing of more colonies. It's always good to have more, hive than one, more hives than one because one hive will be going fantastic and bringing in all sorts of beautiful honeys into your hive and the other might be really slow and you might not even get any honey that season. So it's important to have more than one hive, I think. And also it allows you to fix a colony that's gone queenless by getting a frame from another hive and putting it in to the hive that's gone queenless and if it's got eggs on it, they can then raise a new queen. So I showed you how to do what was a walk away split today where we basically took some frames out of this one, made sure they had resources to make a queen and put them in to this new hive. So with any luck, they'll raise a good queen and away they'll go. But alternatively, you can buy in a queen in the mail from a queen breeder. Now that's ideal because queen breeders will breed for, for good genetics, be it gentle, and hygienic and productive. And if you really want a gentle hive, if you've got uh, people near your hive often, it's close proximity to, to your house and so on, then ordering a queen is the way to go. In this case, they'll raise their own queen, they'll mate with all sorts of other hives in the area, they may get some genetics that are, are a bit aggressive, it's a luck of the draw, in which case if we do get really aggressive genetics, we'll then have to go through the process of requeening to um, make sure we get a nice gentle hive. Any more questions? Lloyd would like to know what month do you split in Canada? Okay, so Canada in the springtime is when, is when people are, uh, are um, taking their splits now. There's, there's also sorts of tactics they use there in Canada. Often beekeepers are starting from scratch depending on their tactics of how to survive the winter. And they'll be, they'll be splitting as fast as they can as the season um, goes on and buying in lots of queens and buying in lots of nukes to expand their apiaries out. So the springtime is the, is the best time to get going. Here in Australia, in the subtropic region that we're in, you can take splits, um, uh, it actually most times of the year because we're close to the coast and get good flowers all winter. The hive that you've just created has um, three queen cells. So will the bees kill two out of the three queens that you found? Okay, well done. The, the answer is yes. And what happens is once one queen's mated, um, she will um, become the dominant one and and yes the the other two will end up dying. Catherine um, is asking is it necessary to take splits from the hive or can you allow the bees to swarm naturally 
We live on farmland, not surrounded by many houses. Okay, you don't have to take a split. You can let them swarm, but it's going to, um, it's going to mean uh, being close by to notice when they swarm so that you can then catch them and start your hive that way. It's um, not generally great practice as a beekeeper just to do nothing and let your hives all swarm because your swarms end up um, taking up residence in all sorts of interesting places and um, that can be not so good for your neighbours, etc. if they end up in their mailbox or in their wall cavity and so on. So the best thing to do is take splits. Um, there is, um, although catching swarms can be fun as well if you happen to be around your apiary. Let's say if they're around your office window and you're there all day and you're able to watch the swarms then um, and, and, and catch them when you see that temporary landing that they do. They usually land uh, just 100 metres away on, on a bush like these little trees over here and that can be an opportune moment to catch the swarm. If you take a look at our, our YouTube channel or Facebook page you'll see some live swarm catches where um, you can learn about how to do that as well. Danny would like to know how often do you open your boxes. His are full of wax so can't take the frames out. Okay, um, it is important to make sure your hive is serviceable. So, so if you've got a situation where, where um, the bees have built in such a way that you can't take the frames out, then you'll need to rectify that. So if, if you've got a lot of cross comb happening where the bees are joining the frames together, you'll need to chop that in order to get your frames out. And if it's really wonky, you need to put them near the edge of the hive, let them convert that to honey, take them out, use them for, for honeycomb and put some fresh ones in and that you'll need your management to be such that you end up with straight combs that are all serviceable. So if it's really bad what you can do is um, turn your box upside down and take the box off the frames and then what you've got is the frames on their own and you can then pry them apart and start working with that to create straight frames. You can use rubber bands if you need to to hold hold uh, the, uh, the sections of brood in place if it, if it really is that bad. I've never had to do it like that, but apparently that's a technique to, to make sure you get nice straight frames. You can use rubber bands or even skewers through the holes in the side to hold the sections that are straight in place. And it's a matter of then monitoring your hive and making sure they're, they're building straight and if they start to go wonky, push them back online. Once they've built out all the frames and they're all hanging straight enough, then you're right and the bees will follow suit after that. Sam would like to know if it was warmer weather, would you have put the new brood and had empty frames in between it? Um, even in warm weather, I prefer to keep at least three frames of brood together in the centre and then start checkerboarding after that. Reason being is the queen can, can get a bit isolated and not tend to bridge the gap to the next frame over. So if you've got big gaps of empty space between, between your, your brood nest, then you might not get as efficient a start as if you have a nice cluster re respecting the natural order of having brood in the centre of your box. So I'd put it together and then check a board, which means uh, new frame, old frame, new frame, as you get out to the edges of your hive where there's honey frames. Um, if he's asking what's to stop the bees in the new split going back to the original hive. Okay, so it's positioning that stops them going back. So what we've done is moved this hive over to here. Bees are incredibly like GPS located to their, their home. So a lot of the returning foragers and even bees that fly out the front of this hive will return back to this position because that's where the entrance was before. So that's the little trick. If you find that you, you, your numbers are really dropping in the new hive, then move the original one even further away. So all the returning foragers come back to the weaker hive. So you can use that to make sure there's bees coming home to both hives. Jan would like to know what she did wrong on the, for her first honey harvest, um, as there was some wax in the bottles of honey. Okay, wax in their bottles of honey from the flow hive is unusual, but 
the, um, the most likely cause is the trough area. If you have a look here, in, in this trough area down here, you can get a bit of wax falling through as the bees build their comb sometimes. So if you give that a little clean out before you start, you won't get those little wax flakes in your honey. However, they float to the top of the jar, so it's generally not too much of a problem anyway. Sin's asking, oh, Sin says, my hive has several queen cups, some with royal jelly inside. It's not an overly full hive. How frequently should I check this hive to keep an eye on these queen cups? Okay, so that poses an interesting question and that, that is what kind of strategies you want to use in order to um, do your spring management. So some beekeepers like to get in there and destroy swarm cells, which are the, the uh, queen cells or cups that are on the lower side of the frames. And if you've got a double brood box, they're almost always on the lower side of the top brood box. If you've got a single, they'll be on the lower side of the frames here. Now, some beekeepers like to get in there and destroy them all to limit the chances of swarming. They might have purchased a really nice queen. They, want, they don't want to lose her as she swarms off with the swarm. So, um, but other beekeepers like to um, let the hive do its thing and just take splits or give them some more space in spring and limit the swarming that way. So it really is up to you how you decide to do the management. Ask two beekeepers, you get three answers. So, um, so generally the commercial beekeepers will tend to, tend to flip their boxes up on their end and just smash off any swarm cells on the underside of the frames. Um, I don't tend to do that myself. I tend to take splits in the springtime. There's always people looking for, for new colonies if you don't want them yourself. Um, David's asking, do you use the plug in the cover? If so, what is the advantage? Okay, so the plug in the cover is for feeding your hive or if you do want to allow bees up into the roof cavity to build some honeycomb there. So I'll just show you what we're talking about. If I lift the roof off here, you've got a plug here. So if you want to make a feeder, I've got a video of how to d make a do-it-yourself feeder just by putting holes in the lid of a jar putting sugar syrup in it and turning it upside down. Generally, we don't do a lot of feeding around here, but people in colder areas might feed if there's not enough honey stores to survive the winter. Also, if you've got a really weak colony that's starting, you might choose to feed them as well by, by putting a jar on top. So that's um, what the hole's for. However, some people like to leave the plug out and just let the bees move up into here and build honeycomb in this roof area. It can be fun for a while. I find it gets a bit messy and I prefer not to do that. But honeycomb is, is a nice thing. So another way to go about it would be to put a container under the roof here and let the bees build honeycomb in a container. In which case you could then lift the container off and have a container full of honeycomb. So there's a few options there for your plug. Barbara's asking what hive beetle traps do you use and are they in the base? Okay, that's a fantastic question because when you've got a new colony like this and they're weak, that's the opportune time that hive beetles tend to take over your hive. So what a good thing to do would be is put some oil in the tray here in our Flow Hive 2 base. So if you have a look here, we've got a tray and all we need to do is put some cooking oil. I run my car on old fish and chip oil from the chip shop, so I've got plenty but you can either use some used cooking oil or some uh, cheap cooking oil that you buy. You don't need to have it very deep, just needs to cover these surfaces here. We put these baffles in so it doesn't all flow to one end and we counter slope the tray because flow hives are on a three degree slope. So what you'll find is you'll trap hive beetles in here, which is a good thing if you've got a lot of them around. If you've got um, our classic, you'll need to employ some different tactics in order to, to limit your hive beetles. You might choose to, to slide in a little container underneath the screen to catch beetles. You might choose to make a fluff trap, which I've got a video somewhere where you get some of that um, tablecloth you see in, in some cheaper restaurants 
where uh, on the underside is nice and fluffy. You can buy that kind of stuff at a textile store and um, glue it down to your core flute slider and the beetle's legs will get stuck in that fluff. So there's a few options there. Other people will choose to use insecticide traps. Um, I don't use them, um, but you can. You can slide them in the tray. If you're going to use insecticide traps, nice idea to have them outside the hive and not in the hive where, where the bees are in contact, in which case you can put them underneath the screen. David is wondering if it's possible to oversaturate an area with too many hives. Okay, that's a, that's a good question. The, um, what tends to happen is when you've got a lot of flowers, there's plenty for, for everyone. The, the, the flowers are, are heavy with nectar dripping to the ground and there's so much to go around and then there'll be nothing for a while and then there'll be lots again. So, so commercial beekeepers tend to put somewhere between 40 and 100 hives in one location in this area. And right now, down here in the, uh, the farm, the, mac the macadamias are just flowering and there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of forage, a lot of nectar and there's beekeepers that have several hundred hives in one spot. Um, so, so that's, you probably wouldn't want more than a hundred or so hives in, in one spot, I think, depending on, on how much flowers in your area. Places like Canada get such big nectar flows that you could have a lot more, where, where you hear of stories of the bees filling up a box like this in 24 hours. It's absolutely exciting when that kind of thing starts to happen. Around here, probably a week to fill a whole box like this is the fastest we ever see it, and that's in the springtime. Okay, we've got time for a couple more questions. Robin's wondering, if you add a new box, should it be above or below the original box? Okay, that's a, that's a good question. There's a few things to think about. So if you're drawing natural comb, it should be underneath. So drawing natural comb, the bees t like to hang down from the frame bars. Now, if you put it above, what will happen is the bees will move up in the brood nest and start building from the bottom up, and then it gets really wonky and wavy. So if you're drawing natural comb, then and you're adding a brood box, then it'll go underneath. If you're using foundation, it can go under or above. If you're adding another super, generally beekeepers will under super, which means the new super will go between the two. So the bees have to run through the empty one in order to get up to the full one, and you'll find you'll get some, some quicker action there. Also, bees tend to like to keep the honey, which is their gold, away from the hive entrance. So if you just put it on top, the bees will go about moving a whole lot of honey from this box up to the next one. So under supering will make things a little more efficient. Gabrielle is asking, can you mix wax frames with foundationless frames? Absolutely. So you might have noticed some of the frames in the box that we were actually using had wax and wire as a foundation and some didn't. Now you notice that just by looking at the end bars. So they, you can totally mix it up and sometimes it can be a good idea. It gives the bees a nice straight start and they'll follow on from that. Typically if you buy a nuke from a, a bee breeder, they'll be all foundation frames, either wax or plastic foundation. One more question. So how long will it take before you can super the new split? Okay, the time to super the new split, and we'll be doing a video of how to do that in the coming weeks, is when the bees have filled out all of the frames and they're nice and full. So the reason why you want that is, is so that the size of the hive is nice and fitting for the colony. You don't want to have a big hive with only a few frames that are drawn out with brood in the bottom because it's too much space for the bees to look after and keep nice and warm in the cold nights. So you want to wait till it's nice and full, they've drawn out all the combs, they've got a, a pumping hive, and then you add your super. Thank you very much for watching. That's how to do a relatively easy hive split. It's a great thing to do in the springtime. If you've got any more questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get to answering them. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.